Hey y'all, today I'm going to be um, quickly sharing with you the books that I read in the month of October. I am so behind schedule, it is not even funny. Um, I had a cold and um, every time I attempted this video, I ended up with a coughing or sneezing fit, which I am sure you did not want to see. And it was beyond my editing skills to fix that. So here we are, November 1st trying to get this video done uh, for the books that I read in October. So um, real quick, um, I'm going to share uh, the read alouds that I finished with my children first because I totally count those in my book count. And then I will share the books that I finished personally this month. Um, unfortunately, I do not have most of the books on hand. Um, some of them were new releases from the library and because of the um, waiting list for them, I couldn't renew them. And then some um, just uh, had to be returned um, while we were near the larger library that we use um, so that they wouldn't be overdue. Um, but I will pop a picture up here um, so that you can see the cover of the book so that if you're in the bookstore or the library, you see the cover, you'll you know kind of recognize it and can uh, take a look at it. I also put links down below to all the books that I mentioned and um, that way you can uh, check them out online as well. I know I like to go online and read reviews and things like that. Um, so super handy way to do a little bit of window shopping before you head to the library or the bookstore. Um, I do apologize for the sunglasses but I'm sitting in the parking lot of the YMCA uh, getting ready to go in and take a class so um, um, I'm already fighting a headache so I'm just kind of blocking the light so that I don't end up with a full-blown you know exploding head so again first I'm going to start with the books that I have on hand which just happen to be our read alouds and this first one is Johnny Tremaine by Esther Forbes and we actually started this I think back in March it has taken us forever to get through it um, I think it kind of started a bit slow excuse me for me and so you know when I'm not really enjoying the read aloud it's really hard to stay motivated um, some of my older kids love Johnny Tremaine and some of my older kids do not like him at all so it, in our house it's one of those you either really like it or you really don't kind of books so but I really enjoyed seeing um, just the mm, just the character of Johnny Tremaine kind of maturing through uh, throughout the book. So I'm really glad we read it. It was just, um, it was a read aloud for um, our school because it falls into the time frame that we're studying in history. So that's why that one was read aloud. So I definitely say if you haven't read it, if your kids haven't read it, you know, add it to your, um, you know, history uh, reading selections um, if, um, if you haven't read it. And uh, maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. It seems to be kind of split down the middle in our house. Um, we also finished up the third uh, Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place, The Unseen Guest. This was book three of the series. And um, my kids, my younger kids is who I'm really reading these to. My older children have already read them um, previously. Um, we are enjoying them. I will say that for me, book three was a little just slower. Um, it wasn't quite as enjoyable as the first two were, which I think sometimes happens when you have a series, you know, you kind of have this like middle book that's kind of the bridge, you know, for the story to continue. Um, my kids loved it. My husband still enjoyed it. So, um, so maybe it was just me. I don't know. I'm really picky. I don't know. So we're going to finish up that series. We're alternating it with a di with another series um, and stuff. So we will be um, picking up book four, mm, maybe read in November or at least started in November. I'm thinking maybe we'll see. I don't know. I might throw in a more holiday-ish book in there. I'm not sure. I haven't decided. Um, Another book that we finished in October was The Bark of the Bogal, which is um, book one in the Wilder King trilogy by Jonathan Rogers. I read this several years ago, this trilogy out loud, to my older kids probably about seven, eight years ago. So I'm reading it to my younger ones 
now. Um, so we finish up the first book, The Bark of the Bog Owl, in October, and we're reading the second one is our current read aloud in the evenings right now. Um, an excellent, excellent trilogy. Um, if you have not read it, you need to share it with your children. It is an excellent story. It's adventurous. Um, it's got Fiji's in it, and trust me, you need to meet your Fiji's. The Fiji's are excellent, excellent characters in this book, and um, uh, Fiji's are just a huge part of literary conversation uh, in our house. So I cannot recommend this enough, uh, this trilogy um, by Jonathan Rogers excellent trilogy and worth worth reading even as an adult if you don't want to read it aloud just read it for yourself it's a really great um set of books that we enjoy so those were the three read alouds that i finished up in october of course we've got several more in progress so hopefully more of those will be finished up in november and so on to the books that i read just for me you see the sun's going down so my lighting is messing up but I'm still not taking my sunglasses off y'all because I do not need a worse headache than I already have so um so I read The Law of Finder Keepers which is the fourth book in the Moe and Dell mystery series by Sheila Turnage and y'all if you have not read the Moe and Dell series you need to it is hilarious and sweet and it is just a great book it is um children's fiction it is southern fiction um, my, a variety, I mean, my husband listens to the audio of these books when they come out, and I read them, and my teens read them, and it's just really great. It's, Mo is the main character. It's Moses LeBeau, and she's a girl, and she was just found as an infant floating down the river after a hurricane, and the person who found her had amnesia. And so he named her Moses, um, not realizing she was a girl when he named her. So they just call her Mo, and she's friends with um, this guy named Dell. They're middle schoolish age, and uh, so they run the Desperado Detective Agency. Um, so they solve these mysteries that happen in their little small southern town. So lots of quirky, fun characters um, in the book. For your mystery-loving kids, there's like a mystery to be solved in every book. And of course, the greatest mystery that spans all of the books is who um, Mo's real mother is. And so that's her biggest mystery that she needs to solve. It's finding out who her mother is, where she came from. Um, and stuff, and so, um, so it's a really, it's a really great book for, like, so many reasons. It will make you laugh out loud. They have made me cry, and it's just super sweet, um, books. So, I just highly recommend, if you have not read, uh, the books by Sheila Turnage, that you look them up. Um, you definitely need to read the first book. Um, I think you need to read them in order, but Sheila Turner's the author says, as long as you've read book one, you can jump straight to book four. But I really think you miss some character story that kind of endears the characters to you a little bit if you don't read book two and three. So, um, definitely check out that series and I will link it down below. Um, I also read An Hour Unspent by Rosanna White. This is, uh, Christian fiction, but it's also historical fiction set, um, during the first uh, World War, and it's in England. It's part of the Shadows of England series. It's the third book in that series, and you really need to read them in order just because of character development in them. Uh, so this third book was about a character named Barclay, and so, so good. I enjoy it. It's nice, clean fiction, so I can read it without having to, to be worrying about content, um, but I also love the time period that it's set in, and I think Rosanna White does a great job of um, giving you characters that you just really care about and gives you a nice full story um, and that the the backdrop the setting that she creates is realistic and believable and um, so so really good I think they're really good and I enjoyed that one um, I also read Harbor Me which is the newest book by Jacqueline Woodson. It's children's fiction. I'd say probably middle grade fiction. It's not a super thick. It's a very quick read. Um, and it's 
told, um, it's telling the story of six students that are in a classroom together. One person uh, from the class is really telling everyone's story in a way. Um, you know, it's not, I've read some books by Jacqueline Woodson, like Brown Girl Dreaming, and just really loved it. This one was just kind of ho-hum for me. <clears throat> I think it brought up some wonderful topics of discussion, um, such as um, Im immigrants and, um, you know, what happens to illegal immigrants. Um, things like um, minorities and race. Um, things like that, just topics worthy of discussion, but for me, it just felt kind of, there was like really no depth for, I think, I think the book would have been better if perhaps it had been um, targeted to an older audience and the book had been a little bit more developed, the characters had been a little bit more developed, I think. Um, I didn't agree with everything um, in the book, which is fine, because I, I like to read books that kind of challenge my thinking. Um, but I think if it had been fleshed out a bit more, um, made it a bit heavier book maybe, it would have been better. It was more like, let me just throw these, you know, hot topics out there and call it a day. I don't, I don't think it was fleshed out enough, but that's just me. That's just me, and again, I think it's geared to a middle grade audience, and, um, so I'm sure other people love it and it's just a personal preference. So if you've read some of her other books or you want to have some discussion with your kids and you like to use a book to kind of spring those conversations into action, then you might want to check out um, Harbor Me and check it out. Um, I also read Extras by Scott Westerfield, which is like the fourth and what was originally the Uglies trilogy, but I guess now you would call it the Ugly Quartet because extras was kind of added on to that. Mm, it was okay. I enjoyed the first book, Uglies, in the series, and then they just kind of went downhill from there. But I wanted, I made myself finished extras because now he has a new series coming out. The first book is Imposters, which kind of picks up the storyline a few years down the road. So I wanted to make sure I had all the background information, but I found it a bit slow and pointless really um let's see i also read caught by surprise by jen toronto which is also christian fiction normally i like her books because they're witty and humorous but this one for me it was very slow to get started in the middle it picked up but man i had to just make myself get to that middle point of the book to really enjoy it so i was a little disappointed in this one compared to the other ones i had read um i can't remember which series it's a part of, but um, I'll link it down below. I mean, it's, you know, I enjoy reading Christian fiction, especially right before bed, because it just kind of helps me de-stress, and I'm not having to worry about content or language or anything like that, but this one I was expecting to be a little bit more humorous than it was, and I just felt like the dialogue was kind of overkill during certain parts, but that's okay. Let's see, what else did I read? <laughs> oh, I read a book, Saving Winslow, which is the newest book by Sharon Creech. It is children's fiction. This, I would say, is probably elementary, middle school, would, maybe would enjoy. It's a very short book, very short chapters, so it's a very quick read if you're a strong reader, and if you know, you're a new reader or um, a struggling reader, it would be good because it's just not going to be overwhelming. Um, in the amount of pages in each chapter or the amount of pages overall. It's about this boy who uh, raises um, an orphaned donkey and he wants to keep him but he can't because of where he lives. He, the donkey eventually is going to have to leave. So it's just you learn um, kind of about him while he's raising this donkey and also about another girl in the neighborhood um, and the donkey. So uh, the girl in the neighborhood and the donkey. That made no sense. This girl in the neighborhood and her kind of connection with the donkey as well. So, I mean, it was an okay book. Nothing, I mean, so it was okay. It was okay. Um, nothing's really impressing me so far, is it? I also read Messenger of Truth 
by Jacqueline Winspear. She writes the Maisie Dobbs mystery. It's adult fiction. They are nice and clean. I mean, every now and then there might be like a curse word in there, but it's set in between the two world wars in England. She is a private detective. She really is into um, like intuition and meditation to kind of help her solve these mysteries and stuff. Um, I have a couple of daughters who enjoy mysteries, and so. Um, I've just been kind of reading them along with them. We're just kind of a common book we pass around. Um, so it's good. It's a nice, easy read. Um, I haven't always been a fan of mysteries, but um, in the past couple of years, I've really started to enjoy them a bit. So um, if you like mysteries and you want something, you know, that's clean content to read, then you might want to check out the Maisie Dobbs series. I think that was book four in the series, and I do think it... Um, I think in these, you do want to read them in order. I would recommend that you read them in order. I don't even know what time it is. Have I missed my class? No, but I got to wrap this up really quick because it's almost time for my class. So let me see. Oh, and then I think the last one, hold on. I'm looking at my book where I write down all my stuff in. <laughs> Let's see. I did that one and that one. That one. Okay. So the last one I have, I think if I miss one, it'll be, I'll link it down below if I miss it. But the last one was The Clockmaker's Daughter. is Kate Morton's newest book that just came out, I think, in September or October. Oh, my word. You need to read her books if you haven't. Um, I, I love her lake, The Lake House and The Secret Keeper that she wrote. I've enjoyed all of her books, actually. I read The Secret Keeper first, and then I went and read all the other books that she had published, and then I've been waiting months for The Clockmaker's Daughter to come out, and it is so good so good. I love her writing so much. It was worth the wait. It might be my favorite. It might be my, um, my 14, no, she's 15. My 15 year old daughter reads these two. So I'm perfectly comfortable giving them to her every now and then. There might be a curse word in there. Um, you know, like the D word or whatever. And, um, and sometimes there's a hint of intimacy but there's nothing graphic and so it there's no so I feel completely comfortable handing those books to her and letting her read them um so Kate Morton Clockmaker's Daughter if you have not read it why why go request it at your library right now okay on that note I'm gonna miss my class so I need to run inside to the Y and change my clothes and go burn some calories and burn off that cookie I ate with my mom this afternoon and stuff. So I will hopefully um, be back mid-November with an update on the books I've read because of Thanksgiving. I'll try to get a video out in mid-November. I also need to do a video on um, what we're doing in our homeschool. Do some updates on the homeschooling stuff. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of those videos. And hopefully the next one will not be coming from the inside of my car. You guys make it a great day. Make sure you grab a book, read a chapter or two, and I'm going to go hit the gym. Catch you later, guys. Bye.